back in May of this year, I tweeted this out. Quote, man, the secret wars between companies and groups in the industry be wild. End quote. Now that same day, I remember seeing that Jay Beasy, the owner of Sea Junkie, had liked the tweet. It's now been four months later, and that tweet of mine, well, has never been more true. I've been very quiet about the situation. Dude's been crying like a little bit for a long time, throwing subliminals. And it's sad what's happening in the industry right now. Everyone wants to team up with big money guys and sue people. Um, look, Jay Beasy, you chose to go do your own thing. One of your biggest investors, billionaire, um, largest shareholder in MedMen, fires you up and gets you to file a lawsuit on us. Back in February of this year, I started to get a flood in my inbox. People sending me this post that the owner of Sea Junkie, Jay Beasy, had posted on his Instagram, for which he left up for an hour or so before taking the post down. Now the post went, quote, the biggest scammer and thief in the industry is watching his empire crumble in front of him. He stole from every partner he's known and is being sued by all of them. Karma catches up to you. It's public record, FYI, end quote. The caption of the post by JBZ simply asked, who do you think this is? Insert down below. Now, while this was more than five months ago, many believe that JBZ was talking about the founder of the Cookies brand and that of the rapper Burner, otherwise known as Gilbert Malam Jr. and seemed to be in relation to the partnership that JBZ and his company had gone into with Burner and Cookies in creating the joint venture collab brand Mids. Now, we can't be sure that this post was specifically referring to Burner, but like I said, many believed it was. Now, I just filed that screenshot on my computer back, you know, back in my files and kept going with my day. But I definitely thought that maybe one day it could come in useful in helping piece together the context of telling the story of the fallout between two individuals and their respective companies. Now, while that post that JBZ had made on his Instagram is obviously a massive exaggeration and couldn't be fully true because, well, I'm sure you would have heard a lot more about you know, these kind of situations happening. But still, if it is about him, it's still paints a bit of bad light. But I think there's a lot more to the story and I'm going to do my best to tell a balanced, accurate story of what has happened in this fallout and lawsuit that has been initiated by JBZ and his company against Burner and Cookies. And this video has far more information analysis than anywhere else on the internet, so buckle up. I've talked to both Burner and JBZ and gotten both sides. And this story has massive implications for this new emerging industry and for these two companies that have become fixtures in the space. Is this move made by JBZ just a part of a broader plan orchestrated by some powerful people who want to overthrow Burner and his business partner Parker from controlling the Cookies Empire? Or is JBZ and his partner Wes think that the Cookies shelf mints and feels that there hasn't been enough transparency from Cookies and that they've potentially been cooking the books? Well, these are the questions we are going to explore today and try and maybe answer. Anyways, welcome to this episode of High Design History. Please make sure to hit the like button, share this, comment down below. Follow me on all the social media links, links down, down below in the description. Anyways, this is LMC. Let's run it. Before we move on with the content, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Smoke for supporting this content right here. So if you guys go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC, you're gonna get 15% off your entire order. And I highly recommend that you, know, you go to Dr. Smoke, order some stuff, they've got high quality stuff, they've got drinks, all different types of goodies, big brands, right? All different types of brands, 3G, all super high quality, all tested, all good to go, all legal, delivered to your door. And also, this is gonna help you know support this content here. So if you wanna support the show, Go try it out, go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC10, and get 50% off your order. Now, let's jump back to the content. So to understand what is happening today, we need to learn the history and the build up to this lawsuit. So it was 2017 and Los Angeles was having the Chalice Festival, which was a massive festival for the industry. And Ivan, the owner of the Jungle Boys, had invited Burner to come through to their building in LA where they were having a bunch of different breeders selling their gear. And this would be where Burner would meet the two owners of Sea Junkie, Jay Beasy and Wes. 
Side note, it seems that Ivan and the Jungle Boys Chalice event connected a lot of people that year in 2017, given I've mentioned this event in a couple of other documentaries, but shout out to Ivan and his team for always putting people on. I definitely think that he helped Burner in certain ways learn the game and of, you know, the industry, and in other ways, Burner kind of helped Ivan and the Jungle Boys and taught them the clothing game, but that's for a whole other video, maybe one day in the future. But yeah, this would be the first time Burner and JBZ would meet. Now, fast forward to 2019, and we get to a critical year for both Cookies and Sea Junkie. 2019 was the year that Cookies made a number of partnerships with different companies, including Runs, Grandview Floor, Sea Junkie, and some other ones as well. Yet, what was different about Sea Junkie in comparison to Runs or Grandview Flora is that JBZ and Wes wanted to keep the Sea Junkie brand separate and do a joint venture. So that's where, when they became up with the collaborative brand Mints. Now, almost all of these deals are structured where Cookies either takes 51% ownership or 50-50 ownership. But the thing that it seems they always want is them for them to control the marketing slash the money. Now, I'm not sure what the specific numbers are for Mints, but I'm pretty sure they they're initially were around 51% Cookies, 49% Sea Junkie, and that might have changed over the you know over the years, but we don't really know. But it seems that from 2019 to 2022, everything was good money, at least publicly facing. I believe that the Mint's brain was becoming less hyped up as each year went by because in 2021 or 2022, Mint's never really popped off like many had thought it would. Now, did Cookies and Burner somehow sabotage the Mint's brand? Well, we'll speak more on that later on in the video, so stick around. But going back to the initial partnership, it seems like, in my opinion, that it was a mutually beneficial partnership. Sea Junkie got a considerable boost in notoriety from Burner and the Cookies platform, and Burner and Cookies got an another brand to put under their house of brands. But more importantly, he got access, Cookies as well, got access to a bunch of different flavors that JBZ slash Wes and the rest of their team produced for Mint slash Cookies. In 2020, almost 80% of Cookies' entire genetic menu was bred by Sea Junkie or JBZ himself. So yeah, Cookies definitely benefited as well as Sea Junkie, that cannot be denied whatsoever. But fast forward to today, right? So it was announced about five or six days ago, as of me writing the script, that Jay Beasy and his company, Sea Junkie, was suing Burner and the Cookies Company. In an Instagram post by Jay Beasy that was later taken down, Sea Junkie founder, aka Anthony Harp, said him and his partner Wes were sold a dream which never materialized, which tried our, you know, they said also in the post, we tried our best to be patient and humble despite the obvious issues we were dealing with. But now accountability, accountability must happen, Hart wrote. Along with this caption, he posted the first two pages of the lawsuit, which to quote the MJ Biz article I'm referencing here, Cookies executives, quote, abused their power to cook Mint's books to Sea Junkie's detriment. And to quote, line their pockets at Mint's and Sea Junkie's expense. The lawsuit alleges, now, Cookies also stole Mint's proprietary genetics, mislabeled them, and fraudulently sold them as Cookies' own product and or provided them Cookies' affiliated cultivators in exchange for lucrative kickbacks and priority treatment, the lawsuit adds. Not only for us, but also to let everyone know in this industry, you must be willing to be ethical partners and break bread, end quote. Now, a couple of hours later, Burner would post a response video, which is the first thing that I had personally seen that day, so I read JBZ's post after I saw Burner's Instagram post, but now Burner's post, just like JBZ's, was eventually taken down, but I was able to screen record it and upload it to my Twitter. By the way, go follow me on Twitter, the link is down below in the description to get updates on the story and get previews of future videos, but I uploaded the video to Twitter and it was pretty wild because the video got 70,000 plus views in only a couple days. Now, let's watch this clip and we'll break it down, all down in better detail so things make more sense. Peep this. Hey, what up guys? I hate to even have to do this. I've been very quiet about the situation. Dude's been crying like a little bit on Instagram for a long time, throwing subliminals. And it's sad what's happening in this industry right now. Everyone wants to team up with big money guys and sue people. Um, look, Jay Beasy, when we met, we brought a lot of value to each other, all right? Whether it be some of the genetics we brought to the table for you to create some staple strains, whether it be us bringing our platform or whether it be you bringing your genetics, right? But 
let's just get this right. We were partners in the men's brands. I introduce you to my audience, which is a pretty big audience. We killed it together. We were aligned, right? We killed it together. We were aligned. You chose to go do your own thing. You wanted to build the Seed Junkie brand. Now, what makes me more upset about any of this than anything is when we first partnered, you told me the Seed Junkie brand was off the table that you didn't want to touch that because of whatever reasons. We won't get into that, right? You went off to go do Seed Junkie, right? With somebody else and you failed. You failed, dog. You failed. Seed Junkie did not pop. From there, you sold clones and upset a bunch of people in the industry by giving them hot Layton. And, um, you know, that was a very big deal online. We still stood behind you. We still had your back. You then partnered with ex-police officers. You panicked when the internet reacted that you called me, you tried to offer me equity, you tried to do anything to get our support. Naturally, I just couldn't really stand behind that. I was very quiet in that. And that that didn't do so well for you, right? And now, one of your biggest investors, billionaire, um, largest shareholder in MedMen, fires you up and gets you to file a lawsuit on us. Well, first of all, the lawsuit's completely false. It's, it's not, there's no validity to any of that. We have receipts for everything we've ever done with you. And I just hate that it got to this point because I respect you as a man. I respect you as a hardworking uh, breeder that brought a lot of good things to the game. I met your father. I spent time with your father, brother. Like, this is some chicken cry baby. And I just had to share my side of the story. Um, in partnerships and in business, things can go left all the time. But in the industry, we have to stop this whole I'm going to sue you shit because at the end of the day, the only one that makes money is the lawyers. And I think it's just very cowardly. There's plenty of ways we could have worked this out. You know how we could have worked this out, but you chose not to go that route. So the same platform that I introduced to you, the same platform that stood in lines to buy your gear that represents me and what I built as, as a person, as a, as a company now has to know what kind of gear you're on. So I know desperate times call for desperate measures. I just never in a million years saw this coming. You're a guy, bro. You sit down like men and you figure shit out. But again, I feel very confident that what we have in receipt and writing and documentation, that what you're claiming is bull. So I'm gonna get back to this lake. I'm gonna get back to doing what I'm doing. I'm getting ready for tour. I got a two month tour all across the nation. I I plan to see all y'all out there. I plan to enjoy my life. And I feel sorry for miserable bs that have to take this route. There's a lot of things about to come to light about JBC Junkie. And I'll leave it at this. A lot of people really don't want you, homie. Because you got a very bitter, sour personality. You don't like to see other people win. You don't give other people credit when credit is due. With that being said... Okay, so we're going to quickly break down Burner's response video that you just saw. But stick around to the end of the video because that's going to talk about the different theories and if this lawsuit will be successful, in my opinion, which we'll talk about a little bit. But so I made an Instagram post a day or two ago. By the way, go follow me on Insta. The link is down below. But the video I posted was just announcing that this video was going to be coming out. But also, I like to make posts like this because I wanted to hear what others publicly you know, had to say by commenting on the post or privately hitting me up in the DMs. But I came across my, my good homie Carlos, who is the owner of the Charlie's brand down in OKC slash Texas. And I think he made a comment that helped kind of sum this up for the most part. But he wrote, quote, I think I can sum up every collaboration lawsuit against cookies in a few lines. Now, I also want to note real quick, too, that this was a joint venture. So it's a little bit different, but I think it's pretty accurate. So Car Carlos writes, Cookies does deal with brand. Brand owns Strain IP. Cookies does all marketing and puts brand in front of their cookies massive audience. The brand gets a small cut of revenues. Brand feels they should get paid more. Cookies feels their audience is worth more. Cookies puts brand on the back burner, no pun intended, and doesn't push as hard and limits the brand's growth and revenue. And then Cookies 
put out strains by brand as other renamed strain and doesn't pay brand. And then the brand gets mad and sues cookies. He then goes on to say, I don't know if this is totally accurate, but I'm sure it's fairly accurate. All the collab deals are forced to fail in my opinion. One side always thinks they have more value than the other. Just my two cents though, could be totally off. End quote. Shout out to Carlos, by the way. Now, for the most part, I think Carlos did a pretty good good summary here, in my opinion, but he left a couple things out. I think we need to make sure it hits home that Cookies is in complete control of the financials and is in complete control of the supply chain, meaning that they were in control of what flour went into Mint's bags and Sea Junkie didn't. So, meaning Sea Junkie couldn't have used the flour they grew their, themselves in the Mint's bag and had to rely on Parker or someone else from Cookies purchasing the flour from other partner cultivators or whoever and put that flour in the mince bags. And I mean, think about it. In this situation, if you own Cookies and had a bunch of other deals like mints, but you didn't own as much of mints, right? Would you put your best flour in the Cookies bags or the mince bags? Now, when it comes to the genetics and the Cookies stealing genetics and renaming it, well, there definitely is a lot there. And I think there's some very valid points that you know i've heard from other people but i think i'm gonna wait to talk about that in part two and in the second part of this video but yeah the supply chain being controlled by cookies and not sea junkie is an interesting component to think about in the story now this also goes back to the rumors that cookies shelves brands right similar to that of what happened to runts by the way if you haven't watched the high design history episode i did on the cookies and runts lawsuit i highly recommend you go watch it if you haven't already but now in bringing up the whole run situation, it is interesting because if you look online, my video is the only thing that even talks about the situation. And to this day, there's nothing else out there, which is weird. I've had journalists hit me up trying to find the case number, but they could never find it, which is why there is literally no record of it. Because technically I did that video from rumors and anonymous sources that I had, which I knew were actually and truly they were right. Right. But what happened in that settlement was that Cookies gave back like 31% or something like that. And Cookies still retains to this day 20% of the Runts brand, but obviously handed back control to Nick, Ray, and you know, LB. And they also paid $2 million in unpaid royalties. Now, anyways, what that points to is that Cookies settled with Runts privately and had to pay on unpaid royalties in my understanding well if you start to think about it everything becomes clear it's all about getting to look at the receipts the real receipts or that's what jay Beasy told me when i spoke with him looking at the lawsuit that sea junkie filed against cookies they claim that cookies filed false expenses and took money from mints and misappropriated back towards cookies while paying sea junkie little to no profits of from the sales of mints now the, the bags that were sold under mints the lawsuit also claims that cookies failed to report mint's actual profits or where the product were actually being sent while those are just claims there may be some truth to them but we will just have to wait and see when the court case is finished now looking over the last five years cookies has absolutely been eating the lunch of the big bumbling dummies in the mso space and as every day goes by cookies gains more and more control and see this is where the medmen investor and burner that burner mentions in this video might come into play well, it can't be 100% proven, so I'm gonna refrain in saying the exact name, but let's just say this person is really one person in a big family that has been heavily involved in this new emerging industry throughout America and Canada. And well, he and his family have businesses that now directly compete with cookie stores and places like Florida, as well as others. Anyways, according to Burner's video, it might be allegedly that this investor has been pushing C Junkie to take Cookie to court because maybe he saw something Cookies wasn't doing right contractually in their dealings with Sea Junkie in, in the mince brim. Or maybe it's because he wants to somehow take Burner out from the CEO position of Cookies, or maybe it's both. See, by getting access to the books or getting the real receipts, right, via, loss, via lawsuit, maybe there is potential for other Cookies investors to somehow boot Burner and Parker from having control of the Cookies if the books are opened, or the real receipts are shown. But back in April, other lawsuits against Burner and Parker and Cookies were filed, claiming a number of different things like getting illicit kickbacks as well as intimidation, and Cookies investors were calling for Cookies to do an investigation into the claims, which didn't happen. And then later that month, Burner released a video in response saying, quote, when I got sick, I think that a group of predatory investors saw a good opportunity to make a move on me and the leadership over at Cookies, and they've attempted to sabotage my name and everything I represent. Burner said, 
quote, these guys have made extremely false, harmful, damaging claims about myself that are completely just not true, he said. I really look forward to the day in court that we can prove that these claims are false and that they're BS. Now, Berner said that some investors in cookies are attempting to, quote, starve us out. He said he continued to go on saying, well, that's not going to happen. This playbook has been ran on other people in this space, the loan to own model, and it's worked a good amount of times, but it's not going to work here, he said. The bottom line is they underestimated who they're up against. We've got a big fight ahead of us and I'm not scared of it, he added. I just beat cancer and I plan on beating this the same way by staying focused, end quote. Now, is this lawsuit being pushed by the MedMen investor, you know, via Sea Junkie and Maybe is this being pushed by other investors to file the suit? See, I have no idea. But there is a good chance that that might be the case. But does that take away from the claims that Sea Junkie has made in the lawsuit? Not necessarily. Now, Berner has said that Sea Junkie has filed this lawsuit because Sea Junkie was struggling and was also being criticized after, you know, doing a deal with the Glasshouse Farms, whose CEO was a former cop, as well as having a clone drop that were infected with hop laden viroid disease, which um, added to more criticism. But maybe there is some truth to that, right? But also maybe Sea Junkie's business is suffering from their own business, and maybe they need money right now and want to collect money from cookies that they should have been paid a long time ago. Anyways, we'll have to see on all that. Really don't know. That's something, you know, that's what's going to happen when we see the lawsuit finish up. But if these claims that Cookie sabotaged Mints, and therefore Sea Junkie, it would mean that Burner and Cookie similarly did what he claimed the predatory investors attempted to do with him by starving him out. But we will have to wait and see because it's hard to tell who is in the right here. One thing that I love, right, is that Burner, being from the rap world, has brought in the use of subliminal dissing into the industry. Now, you may not like it, but... I why do I personally love it though? Well, uh, the internet detective in me loves a good mystery. And over the last couple of years, there has indeed been a cold war, a gang of subliminals traded between JBZ and Burner. I recommend everyone watching this to go listen to the song Chess by Burner. I'm almost positive, 99% positive. He was talking about JBZ and potentially some other, you know, industry folks as well. Or in the song by Burner, No More Deals, where he says, quote, I can play dirty too. We don't give in to fear. I felt a funny vibe. They've been in his ear. Anyways, there are plenty of other lyrics from other songs that I found that correlate to other stories. So if you're ever interested in learning more about Burner, definitely go analyze the, his lyrics. You can learn a lot if you know the real life stories they correlate to. But yeah, Jay Beasy and Burner have been sending subliminals to one another for years at this point. It's funny how you've actually seen them in interviews together with each other after the fact they've been sending the subliminals. But hey, that's what a Cold War is, I guess. Well, it was a Cold War for a number of years, but JBZ's lawsuit has officially turned it hot. I want to say that I hope maybe one day they can make up and be friends because I am fans of both companies and people, but at the end of the day, this industry can turn the best of friends against each other. Before we move on with the content, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Smoke for supporting this content right here. So if you guys go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC, you're going to get 15% off your entire order. Now, I want to also say too, I've talked to Burner, I've talked to JBZ, they both have agreed to do in-person interviews. So either this may be in the second or in part two of this series or part three of this series, I don't know yet. Um, but I did get confirmations from them, verbal confirmations. So just know that because I, because I know Burner really wants to talk about this and he's excited to show everyone that he was right. And I know JBZ is kind of saying the same exact thing, but we'll have to just wait and see. I'm excited to interview them in person though. But in closing to my aspiring entrepreneurs coming up in this industry, just know you will be tested. You will have to stand up for yourself and don't let anyone hoe you, right? push you around or bully you, but also realize this industry may change you as a person. It may harden you. It may turn you jaded. It may change you in a number of ways, especially the more successful you are. In the song, No More Deals, Burner says, quote, I stay ready for whatever. I just wish I could chill. And they wonder why I chain smoke and pop me a pill. Hardly trust my own friends now. 
How does that feel? I hate to keep my guard up, but this shit got real. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to check the links down below in the description and follow me on all the socials. If you haven't checked out my last video that I did, it was on Tenko and the rise of the Zucci brands. You can go watch it right here. Anyways, this is LMC signing out.